appreciate you for giving us this day. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for watching over us and daily giving our daily bread. God, we can't make it without the life of Jesus Christ being manifested in our mortal flesh. We come to you, Lord, and thank you for letting us be in the house of God. Yes. Lord Jesus, we know that you're real. We know that you came into this world 2,000 years ago as a newborn baby through Virgin Mary, not to condemn the world or judge us, but to save us took upon you our sins, nailed them to the tree, and when they lacerated you, whipped you for our healing, commissioned your apostles after you was rose from the dead to lay the foundation of your church upon this rock. Go and preach this gospel to the whole world. Heal the sick and cast out devils and raise the dead and freely receive, freely give. God, I thank you for, thank you for the, your word is made flesh through your son that's 2,000 years and is more powerful today than ever in history. God, there's more people calling on the name of Jesus to be saved out of these seven or eight billion people in the world. God, hundreds of thousands of them are calling upon your name, even though most of them are going the other way. Thank you for the believers. God, you said a remnant would be saved. Thank you, Lord. And I ask you, God, to bless this service this evening. If any among us, Lord, you told James in his epistle, if there was any among us that was sick, for us ministers, for those that had, you had chosen and put in the church that Knowing them with oil and the prayer of faith would save them. And the Lord would raise them up from their sickness. God, we ask you. We ask you in the name of Jesus. We ask you, God, to look among us by your great spirit, by your great power. Give deliverance to the captive. Recover some sights. Is any blind? Curse cancers. All these overrated, incurable diseases. There's nothing too hard for you. There's nothing that you can't heal if we have faith. You once told us there's a grain of mustard seed. And doubt not. We can not only receive miracles and healings and salvation, but move mountains. God, we believe in you. And I ask you for all these re prayer requests, Lord, move. Touch these requests. Give miracles. God, give deliverance. Oh, Jesus, we ask God, not a solitary one I'm going after, we pray. God, in the name of Jesus, do something extraordinary. Well, the Bible said you've done extraordinary miracles in your day, and we've seen so many multiplies of these kind of miracles, unbelievable. God, we ask you to be so that 
this evening. Thank you. Thank you for this gospel. Thank you, Lord, for healing me when I was a hopeless, dying little cripple boy. God, I owed you my life. I wasn't supposed to, to live, but you came and healed me. Give me a life and told me how to work with me to do what I got older. So God, I have owed you. This ain't my life. God, I didn't have a life. I had six weeks to live and live six months. God, you're good. God, you're good. God, you're good. I've never been my own, Lord. And I'm asking for ever need. If you got a special day, I really feel the Lord. You ain't always the size of the crowds. It's it's faith. God in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray right now among us. Look at the needs of those that has needs in their lives. Family needs. God, I noticed some of these few requests we've gotten. Lord, I noticed that they people are requesting for their companion and their young'uns and other needs. Granted, Lord, I just thank you for giving me the privilege to pray for people and pray with them and agree with them. God, we thank you for the good reports we get back. Jesus, if you've got a special need in your life or family, hold your hand up. God, right now you see the need. God, you see the need. Almighty one of Israel, provide that need. If it's, Lord, if it's a husband or a wife or a young or a grand young or a job or a financial need, or God, right now, Lord, a physical need in their bodies, bring it to pass. Grant it before the service is over. We'll honor you. God, we praise you. We give you thanks. God, we give you thanks. And we give you hallelujah praise. God, we just thank you. Grant their needs. Lord, we pray you'll bless this church. Let revival falls break out to the stand around the walls. Stand up in the front part of the church. Lord, be looking through the windows in the summer months. Lord, bring revival, Lord. Glory be to the name of Jesus. We ask for it to be so. Believe it. And expect it. Lord, we come expecting you to do something. All in the name of Jesus. Everybody lift your hand and give him a praise. Give him a hallelujah praise. Glory. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. We just want to take somebody's hand and tell them somebody's going to get healed tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is in me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Forget not all his benefits. The apostle said, Who forgives all your sins. Even your iniquities. You know, iniquity sins are worse than just regular sins. Forgive all your iniquities and healed you 
of all your diseases. Reach over, take somebody and tell them that. Say, Jesus forgives you of all your sins and heals you of all your diseases. You know, some of these preachers and some of you people don't know what you're made for. You're made to serve the Lord. You weren't made to serve the devil. You're made to serve the Lord. Not you didn't create Adam and Eve to be devils. Well, I better shut up, but I'm just telling you. God good, ain't he? You think about how God made Adam and he made Eve. And I said, you know, I don't believe in gay marriage. Somebody asked me the other day, they said, what do you think about all this gay marriage Obama's endorsing? I said, well, God didn't make Adam, didn't make Steve. He made Adam and made Eve. If it was abomination then, it's still abomination. God didn't make a bull and didn't make another bull. He made a bull and made a cow. Made a horse and he made a mare. <laughs> Everything God made, he made a female afterwards, didn't he? Yes, sir. Well, I, I, but the Bible said this is going to be a Sodom and Gomorrah bunch. You know, the president that y'all elected earlier this year, he made this country of Sodom and Gomorrah him and that fifth judge that voted gay marriage you know that fifth judge he's a bit of conservative he went over on the other side and voted that gay marriage made it legal but it's still not legal. He'll, no doubt in my mind, he'll burn hell for that. Because the Bible said God's going to cast all these kind of people. Anybody defiled himself with a, a man, defiled himself with another man, and a woman with another woman, the Bible said they're going to be cast, not dead, but alive. I'm talking about the King James. I'm not talking about them Bibles y'all got. I'm talking about the King James Bible I preach out of. The authorized version. And if you ain't got one of them, you need to throw them others in the trash can. The King James authorized version said, it's abomination. And those that defy themselves with mankind, and that means woman with womankind, will someday be cast alive Read it for yourself. I see some of y'all don't even read your Bibles. The Bible said, cast alive into a lake of fire, burning forever and forever, and throw that third forever on there. So, that's that. I, God told me every while I go to tell folks that. I make folks mad, but it don't make no difference. I'm not going to go to hell for not doing it. Some of these preachers is going to burn in hell with their folks that they caused to go to hell. Bible's talking about all these false teachers that are going to be cast into hell. False prophets, all liars, and if you're not preaching a King James Bible, you're preaching a lie. Yeah. And the Bible talk about folks going out there, yeah. preaching lies and what? Believing the lie and be what? Yeah. Now, I'm not talking about damn in the river neither. I'm talking about being damned in the Please. hell. <laughs> well, I better shut up. I, I'm going to preach a little different. I just like to, God has me to mention that, that stuff because I tell you, I, I'm responsible. I am responsible. I'm going to need a little table later. I'm not going to hold you about 10 hours. And, no, I got to be in border Florida on this side.
uh, on this trip, I tell you, I was trying to think what I was last night. What was we last night? Wasn't we somewhere? Huh? Huh? Well, I tell you, we, we go so many places. I ain't got time to take my brain out and play with it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. <laughs> That's right. I, I have to ask, where are we going? <laughs> We headed to border Florida and come back up this way. I tell you, we've been on the road. We had a wonderful, wonderful meeting over uh, for four days. Used to be an old armory, but but they made it a place where they rent out for uh, a little bit of everything. And usually, some up there in the Fort Payne area rents it for us for four or five days, sometimes twice a year. But, I think I missed it last year, but I've been so busy trying to get his message out. You know, like 37 to 40 countries, maybe 44, but more like 37 countries, preaching to every country on the face of the earth. And that's what God told me when he healed me and commissioned me that I was to do. And I'm 39 years old and holding Thank the Lord and would be as old as Moses when he got called. You know, Moses, when, when the day I was old as Moses at my birthday, the Lord spoke to me and said, You know what today is? I said, Yeah, I do. He said, You're as old as Moses was. I heard that voice from God when I first called him. I said, You trying to call me all over? <laughs> I thought, Man, that'd be nice. And said he'd made it 40 years. And then he disappeared. They never did find his grave. Never did find his body. I believe he was like Enoch and some of the rest of them. I believe no doubt in my mind he went to heaven alive. Well, wouldn't that be nice? Lord, I'll tell you the truth. I don't, I don't go to funerals. Not even my own kinfolks die. I don't go to funerals. I do something to get out of it. Man, I just can't stand funerals. It's just, just, just something I don't believe in. <laughs> I believe in life and believe in it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Glory. And I'll tell you, I'm sure not going to, uh, if, if I do die, if I got any say so, they sure better not uh, put me in that little hickey, or what to call it. If do I, I, I don't warn the folks that takes care of me at the end. If you do, I'm going to jump out of there. <laughs> and I'm going to incinerate you. I don't believe in cremation. If you do, so what are we doing to save money? That's all right. You better be saving hell. Man, let somebody alive. I don't care. I told them to bury me in a, in, a, in a trunk. Don't cremate me. I tried to get a bunch of lumber. They used to back my dad's day. They built a. My dad died when I was 11 years old, and they, the the people built a, a, a funeral box for him. You know they used to do that. Funerals are high. They used to, and there's still people doing that. But nevertheless, I just want to live. I want to be alive when Jesus comes. Don't you? I really do. I want to give you a chance to help us in the offerings. Your offerings. Everywhere we go, we don't, it's to help us to get God's message. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. I really feel some great healing, but we're going to, uh, I've got uh, two different places here I want to read. And I want to, uh, I, I really pray this evening, I feel great healing. I don't believe there's anything that God can't do. I'm expecting. That God can't do. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. I've seen every kind of... Hallelujah. If you could be with some of them... Uh, I don't know Brother Warner. Is he here? Anyway, so I've been... Uh, I read, did, you, did you ever get to go overseas with us? Huh? 
Mexico, we got to go. But they, they you, you find the people that went overseas with us, you know, different over the years. It, it, it's amazing. The, 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 yes. In their heads and God put eyeballs. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is a good God. You know, a, a, a young guy that helped me that was just getting started, he was a kid that got his eye knocked out by his little brother, punched out with a stick, and had to get a plastic eye by the name of Ronald Cohen. Him and I grew up together. He'd been gone a long time. But Ronald, did anybody ever was in the days of Ronald Cohen? Maybe you wasn't. You, you, you know, you, if you did, you say you saw out of an eye, didn't have no eyeball. You know somebody? There's a few people here. Well, him and I were buddies. And we, we've been in many, many countries. Always when we get over and get in a mess, uh, for miracles I'd get him up there first with that no eyeball take that place of eye out for them heathens and let them see what God had done and that just trigger faith yes. India Africa thank you Jesus you know I, I, there's only three people in history that ever got a miracle like that I got to meet two of them in history to see without an eyeball. I mean, your God's real, folks. I mean, you get out here and and everything in this country. You know, since this president in, we've fell from 92 percent believing in God to 18 uh, percent believing in God. That was uh, year before last. I don't know what this year's polls was through O'Reilly, but last year the polls done last January since this president been here we got only 18% of people in America believes in God you know what the Bible said when the, when, when the wicked rule sin takes over but I still I saw that happen y'all you go back to my old prophecies and words and vision I saw we almost lost Christianity in America go back to it and I told you I was going to get down below 20 and down made him get as low as 10 but then God took America back Some way or another, God's going to take America back. You say, why? There ain't no other country. I preached to all every country in Europe when, when more than two or three-thirds believed in God. Now, Europe is not 2% believing in God. Right. Canada, I preached all over Canada when Canada was 85% believing in God. Now, Canada is 98% not believing in God. That's how fast we're going. Something so powerful is fixing to happen that people are going to start believing in God again. Hallelujah. Devil ain't going to have it. God is not turning this world over to the devil. God is still authority and power over all devils. He may get by you, he may get by me or somebody, but the devil don't get by with God. Hallelujah. God is still God and he always is going to be God. And if us preachers are stand up and proclaim Jesus Christ and let the world know that God had lost, hallelujah, you'll see, it won't take long. We'll be back up, thank God, to a, a 90 or 80 or 90 percent in America going to church, believing in the Holy Ghost. We're letting the devil take this country. Europe is gone. Europe ain't but 2% of people in Europe believe in God. You know why? Their preachers didn't fight. Canada has lost Canada. They only 8%. They didn't fight. We got to fight for America. America, I don't care if you don't like it, it's the last country on earth that believes in God. We got to fight for it. We, this is our country. This is a country of God. This is country that, thank God, built up on the Ten Commandments. We built this country up on the Ten Commandments and we're not going to let Obama and the rest of the bombers do away with the commandments. Obama's trying to get away to throw the commandments away, but he's not going to do it. He done took them out of the White House. 
And God didn't send him to hell. He's not going to get by. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. We are built up on the Ten Commandments and we're going to stay built upon it. Hallelujah. When I'm getting mad, I get over it and preach a little bit. But I get mad every time I think about how they're trying to make a, a homosexual. Did you know they passed a law up there this year for gay marriage? But I, I believe somebody told me they had that on hold. I don't know for sure. Huh? They already they let it go. Well, you know what? God's going to judge this country. Wrath is coming. You, you watch it. Hell's going to break loose on this country. I don't want to hope, folks, that people like you, these Baptist people, they're, 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 uh, right now, got Baptist pastors as homosexuals. These Methodists got, got, got homosexual for pastors. Yes, sir. I hope it's people like you. And I know I get, uh, especially if I'm just in a place of night or two, get to praying for America. Yeah. Pray a God. And what he got to do, I don't care what he got to do. Man, if he got to turn half of us into hell, let's say the other half, let it be so. Thank you, Jesus. Hell beneath us is reaching out, the Bible said, with a mouth open because of this. We need God yes, bad. Our only hope is a real second chapter of Acts, yes. 19th chapter of Acts, yes. when Peter carried the gospel over to Cornelius in the 10th chapter. That was to the Gentiles. Yes. Thank God because he had the keys yes. to the kingdom. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Our only hope. They didn't have but 120 on the day of Pentecost that got it going. That's all right. We can do it. Amen. And I'm telling people, everywhere I go, if I stay as much as two or three services, or even one, let's pray for America. Let's take America back. This country was built upon this rock. And the Bible said the gates of hell can't rail well against it. Amen. Devil, don't let him by. Yes, yes. Father, we ask you to bless these words and confirm us tonight, Lord, with signs following the believers. Yes. Make well the sick. God, we know that you are God that bore our sickness, carried our grief, which is our pain. Matthews wrote about it and ate, and I thank you for that scripture. I thank you, Lord, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, as Peter said, with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that was oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. God, we know you're with your son, and you're with those that lift up your son, and you're with those that preach your son, and sets him out there as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thank the Lord. I want to read a, a scripture here in... Uh, uh, Mark and Matthew 4 and Mark and I'm not going to talk to him because I really this evening felt uh, I usually stay isolated. Brother Brian he uh, drives and sometimes others. Brother David drove me a lot and but Brother Brian been driving now for about two years. I don't get out in loafer when we go into these meetings. I used to stay in I don't get out much. And when I'm in that room, I'm not in there watching television. That TV won't be cut on one time while I'm in them uh, rooms. I never cut them on. Now, when I go home, three or four days, me and Gunsmoke has a ball. <laughs> I got my sister got her TV set on one channel. I got my, well, my TV set, he stays on Gunsmoke. <laughs> Somebody asked me the other day, why you want to watch Gunsmoke? I said, well, he like me, he always gets his man. 
They may knock him down. They may shoot him. But he'll wind up getting his man. I said, I'm like that. I'm going to wind up getting his soul. I, I said, I'm like gun smoke. I'm going to wind up getting this gospel out there. I'm going to wind up, thank God, throwing these rocks out there and throwing this seed where we can build back up on this rock. How many wants us to build back up on this rock? I'm going to keep throwing these rocks out there that upon this rock, I'm gonna, we're going to build God's church. I said upon this rock, we're going to be, I'm going to throw these rocks and some of you are going to throw these rocks until upon this rock, we'll build God's church and the gates of hell take the hell against it. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Praise his name. I want to read this scripture in Mark 4 and Matthew 4. Thank you, Jesus. A certain woman, this is 25, which had an issue of blood 12 years, had suffered many things of many physicians, had spent all that she had, was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment for she said if I may but touch his clothes I should be whole and immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague think about it immediately Jesus knowing him said that virtue had gone out of him turned about in the prayer said who touched me my clothes. The disciples said to him, You see the multitude that thrones you, and you say, Who touched you? Who touched me? He looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, you know, she thought she'd done something wrong, knowing what was done in her, came in her, came and fell before him, told him all the truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. Be whole of your plague. Thank you, Jesus. Look what Matthew said about it in four. Oh, I just feel the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In verse 23, Jesus went about all cities, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all men of sickness, all men of diseases among the people, and his fame went throughout all Syria. They brought to him all sick people that were taken with divers of various diseases and torments, those which were possessed with devils, those which were lunatics or crazy, and those that had palsy, and he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes. Thank you, Jesus. That's the way it is with us in Mexico and uh, Africa. Sometimes our crowds in India got up to three million people, three different uh, revivals had three million people and never did we have under half a million or 200,000 Africa our crowds is, uh, going as size as two and three football fields standing standing in the rain areas where the gospel have never been preached thank you Jesus brother Dave last year or year before this, when it was he went into an area that that they'd never seen a white man. And he has to go on ahead. Never seen a white man. As he went in that area, a little black boy about this size here, went to get the mail and saw Brother Dave, never seen a white man, started screaming and running back into that area that had hundreds of thousands of people. And Brother Dave went on in there. We went in there and won over 100,000 people to the Lord. The first night, the mute spoke perfect English. The deaf heard, the blind saw. More than 
on behalf of those people gave their hearts to the Lord Jesus. I'm telling you folks, right now, God's taking the kingdom of America. God's taking the kingdom of America. He's given, that's what he said to Israel. He told Israel 2,000 years ago, when they rejected, said, the kingdom is going to be took from you. You can't have a kingdom without a king. And the Bible said Jesus is the king of kings. Yes, sir. You cannot have a, a kingdom of God without a king. And 2,000 years ago, Israel rejected Jesus. And for 2,000 years, Israel has had no revival. What few Jews that's been saved has had to come through the door and confess Jesus. And when they did, the Jews disowned them and blotted their names over the record of being the sons or the daughters of the kinfolks. Absolutely. 2,000 years. I don't care. I've been there. I've had revivals there. And I've seen a lot of people. And they, they, most time they have to leave that part of the world when they get saved. But don't you know right now, Jesus, he's he not turning America over the devil. He not, somewhere or another, he's going to move like he moved in the Bible. He's going to move again. Jesus ain't coming back for an old church. He's coming back for a church without spot or blemish. Right now, there is no church almost nowhere. I'm talking about a, a not a building, not not a but but a church without spot or blemish, which is made out of sons and daughters and handmaids and servants, men and women's washed in the blood. The building ain't the church. It's those that's been washed in the blood that's come out of the world and separated, say of the Lord. They are the church. Jesus and throw his hands up to the devil. I tell you what he's doing. Mama always told me, said, son, just don't fool the devil. Just give him another rope, enough rope, he'll hang himself. <laughs> Your mama's ever tell you that? My mama used to tell us that. Just don't fool around the devil. Just give him the rope and just don't, don't, don't fight him, but just give him enough rope. He'll be hanging on himself. And the devil's hanging himself. And Jesus ain't running out. The devil's is running out of devils. Hallelujah. I said, the devil's running out of devils, but Jesus is still God. Hallelujah. I said, Jesus is still the fullness of the Godhead. Jesus is still speaking. Let there be light, and there is light. We go in the darkest part of Africa and before three days or two days Jesus speaks light in those areas. Hallelujah. I said light in those areas. Glory. I said glory. He ain't lost this battle. Jesus and people are going to press again. When they heard of Jesus they press. The Bible said here in these two places, when this woman of the Israelites with the heart of Jesus, she pressed her way through the crowd. You know why folks ain't pressing no more? The preachers ain't preaching Jesus. We start preaching Jesus. Hallelujah. Start preaching Jesus. Thank God. And they're going to come back to Jesus. You can't touch Jesus unless he be lifted up. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll touch people. If I be lifted up, I'll set people free. If I be preach. If Jesus is preached, somebody's going to take hold of him. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. You know, I've had people tell me, said, can't you preach nothing else? I said, I could, I guess. But I'll leave nothing else to the nothing else preachers. <laughs> And the Lord just let me do it. I'm going to use these for when I pray for the sick. Thank you, Jesus. Do we have an usher head? Who has an usher head? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Glory. Jesus ain't lost no battle. I tell you what, my mama said, Son, give the devil enough rope 
you'll hang yourself. Your mama's ever tell you that? My mama was a godly woman. She said, don't bow down to him. Just give him enough rope. Yeah, and that's what the devil doing right now. The devil's running out of time. God ain't. I said, the devil's running out of time. And the devil knows where he's going. He knows he's going to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone burning forever and ever just like everybody else. It's written in the scripture. The devil knows that. God didn't hide that from the devil. The devil and his angels at the final end, all his, all the angels of those except the devil, devil and his angels, he's going to be cast into the lake of fire and everybody that believes in the devil every time that's deceived by the devil, that's the devil's angels. They're going to be cast into the lake of fire burning forever. That's one time. Burning again forever. That's two times. Burning the third time forever. They'll never get out of hell and hell is going to be turned into a lake of fire and brimstone but Jesus is right now building a new heaven and a new earth for you and I because the devil is up there one time and the devil this new heaven the devil ain't going to be in this new heaven Jesus making us a place where the devil ain't never been never is going to be there never going to get there hallelujah I said the devil ain't going to get this new heaven hallelujah He knows he's defeated. Not only defeated, but conquered. The Bible said he more than conquered. Didn't he? I ain't on your side. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. I feel such a fire here. Glory to Jesus. Oh, I feel power. I said, hallelujah. Some of you can't say hallelujah. Say happy hallelujah. Glory to God. Say happy hallelujah. Sometimes I get happy and I say happy hallelujah. Happy hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy hallelujah. Happy hallelujah. Happy hallelujah. Glory. Glory. I said, Glory. Thank the one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and Jesus is going to get us back on that rock. Glory. And if on this rock, God said, I'm going to be in my church. And the gates of hell. Hallelujah. Don't, don't throw the towel in. The devil's whooped and he knows it. Glory. He's whooped. Just like Joe Fraser had that dude that couldn't be whooped beat to death. And his manager, Boats Fraser, took some leg, threw the towel in. And Clay already said, if Joe comes out, throw the towel in. I can't take no more. The devil knows he's whooped. Joe Fraser didn't lose that fight. Ali lost that fight. But the devil got it because his manager. Don't throw 
throw the towel in. Some of you preachers has thrown the towel in. Get out of that church. I said get out of that church. If he's thrown the towel in, get out of that church. You get in a church that's preaching against the devil, that's preaching against sin, that's preaching holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Hey, the move, the move is on. The move, there's a new move coming in here. How do you know God told me so? There's a new move. God's got, got, he got rid of all these here phonies. Similarly to God, they ain't no more than a Baptist church no more. Church of God ain't no more than a Baptist church no more. That's all, that's all, that's all. Congregation holders ain't no more than a Baptist church. I don't care if you don't like it, we'll sell it out back. I still got a little fight in me. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. There's a, there's a new crop coming in here. God told me there's a new moon. See what's coming. You gotta have holiness to see God that's coming to us. Oh, hallelujah. My God, I feel power. I feel power. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. If you can just touch him. Leopards and others said, if I can just touch him. The woman said, if I can just touch him. If you can just touch him by your faith. Jesus didn't tell her her faith. That her touch made her. He said, your faith. He said, when you touch me. It wasn't Jesus' garment that made her whole. She said, your faith. Your faith, your faith, your faith when you touch Jesus healed you that is your blood. Your faith. All things, ever good gift and ever perfect gift come from above. I said from above. Oh, I feel such a holiness. I said, I feel such a holiness. I do, I feel such a holiness. That's these little out of town churches and you know, big mega churches. But look where they are. Look at that biggest church in the world at, in Atlanta. That that preacher sold out to the devil. Then the biggest church in, in Tulsa, that devil sold out to the devil. Now they seal that one up. In Tulsa, nobody goes there. It used to be an old time holiness church. 30,000 members, and one of them 35. Now nothing. That, and then that little wimp joined, the, went up there and sold out. I went up and preached for him when he didn't have nobody and had revivals and he started out right. But he sold out. I said he sold out, denied his faith and joined the Luminotics. Sure did. If he's alive, I don't I hadn't heard of him in years. He, he may be already quickly down yonder, you know. There's a place called, I'd call it quickly down yonder. <laughs> If you want to go there, just keep serving the devil. You'll get there quick enough. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Get up. Get back on your feet. Get back in the straight is the gate and out of the way. Get back being a woman. Get back being a man. Come out of the world. 
much out of a woman. My man, why is that? But a woman, why is that pertain to man? It's abomination to God, and neither does a man put on a woman's garment. That's abomination. That's what Europe is like. That's what country after country. Mexico is still hanging on to Catholicism, but at least they still, the women are still women. You know. Now go down, we have tens of thousands saved because I just want you to know the Pope ain't going to do nothing. All the Pope's is probably burning in hell. I wish I could get back up here and tell you all the difference. The dead ones. Man, if they get back, they'd say, don't come where I'm at. <laughs> they're praying right now. Uh, I have somebody stick their finger in water and cool my parts and tongue like the rich man. So much you believe that absolutely. The rich man's still begging for water. The others ain't give him none yet. <laughs> Lathers is with the holy angels of God. Bob said the angel took him to heaven. You keep serving the Lord, and somewhere or another Jesus is going to take you to heaven if he. I need about three more. I'm going to put some of these. I'm going to keep these. About rattle up, run up on a rattlesnake between here and Florida line. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you. Give me about three more of these. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel power. Wonder working power in the wonderful blood of our Lord. Thank you. I'm going to need a little bit of that oil back there. And two more of those hankies. Praise God. Oh, I feel deliverance. Look up and put your faith in him. Right now, make a vow to him, you know. I to make a vow to him. Make a, uh, somebody said, well, I'm scared to make a vow. I'm scared not to. I said, I'm scared not to. Thank you, Jesus. I, I tell you, I appreciate the Lord. Oh, glory. You know, Jesus, everything that he spoke from Mount of Olives is happening now. He said, this is going to happen before my coming. I don't know of anything that he spoke in Luke 17 and 21 and Matthew 24 and Mark 13. Then he had all them holy apostles Every one of them wrote some good stuff about to come in. Paul especially. Amen. Paul said when they say peace and safety. That's what they're trying to do right now in this country and the rest of them. Sudden destruction. Didn't he say it? When they say peace, this is the only generation that you'll find that, that, that's, that's still out there. Here's some of these two. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I feel that. Don't you want to be in that number? Yes, sir. Lord, I'm in that number right now, right now, right now, right now. Don't you believe? Yes. You can touch him. Yeah. This woman said, if I may touch the, his clothes, yes, I'll be made whole. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Here in Mark 5 and Matthew's. It's still God. You know, God is no respect to person. He'll never cater to no nationality. You know, his, his own, you would call it his own, even though he was a God man, they thought he was a Jew. His mother was a Jew, but his daddy was a God. The God of gods. His daddy was the father of the whole world. The Almighty that by the Holy Ghost Amen. went into Mary and she conceived a virgin. When Jesus was born, she was a virgin the whole time she carried Jesus. The Bible said Joseph was a good man and, and, and he didn't touch her because he believed it was an angel until after the, Jesus was born. Yes. Treated her like a wife, went on took her wife where they wouldn't uh, uh, say she had a bastard. Right.
But God told them both, name him Jesus. And Joseph wasn't his last name neither. His last name was God in the flesh. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Oh, he's God. And he's always going to be God. And now, since he went back to heaven, God has given him, according to the scriptures, all power. In heaven and in earth. God in the beginning said, let us make man our image. In our likeness. For 4,000 years, God ruled the world. But when Jesus took over, thank God gave him all power, all authority, and put it in his name. All you got to do is confess that name. Confess that name. There's something about that name. Thank you, Jesus. It gives me peace. Glory. I said glory. Something about that name that when devils hear it, they tremble. You say, what are you talking about? The Bible said they believed and tremble. And it, and when they hear this kind of message right now, devils around here just shaking. Evil spirits. And you can do it. God has given everyone. You wouldn't be here tonight if you didn't have that measure of faith. Amen. Even you go, you may go to the most deadest church in this part of the country, but something or other in you calls you to go to church because something inside that, that, that you, you know there's a God out there and, and you know there's an eternity out there and you know somewhere you're going to be judged and you know somewhere you're going to either separate your company yes. Yes. and you're going to be in heaven or you're going to be in hell down inside of you there's something keeps you holding on keeps you going to church yes. keeps you doing that little night prayer before you go to bed praying that little prayer when you get up you may do things that you, you, you wish you didn't do you may be bound and then after you get do something that you're bound by you say Lord please forgive me but something inside of you Something inside of you causes you to say, Lord, I knew that was wrong, but help me. Help me, Lord. I said, help me, Lord. Help me. You know it's your truth. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Old Robert's got that right in 1945. God is a good God. I tell you, A.E. Allen got that right too in 1551. Thank God that Jesus went about doing good. T.L. Auburn got that right too to take this gospel over yonder. He's the one that, that trained me, thank God, to be a missionary. Before he died, he, he sent his uh, a great word. I want more soul, preach more countries, uh, three times. I mean, he sent he sent uh, his his uh, blessings. I went to see him on his deathbed, but but he sent his blessings before he left this world. Sent some other message. Said, "Go tell uh, brother David Terrell. Thank God, God always gave T.L. Osborne the credit for for for." training me to be a missionary to carry this gospel to over 200 countries. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. God is God. Ain't nobody going to take God out of my heart. I said ain't nobody going to take God out of my heart. And don't you let nothing take God out. There ain't nothing out there. There ain't a piece of money big enough. There ain't a bottle of liquor. There ain't a cigarette. There ain't a dip of snuff and a chart of back or nothing else out there that, that you ought to let yourself be bound with. Thank God that you don't do everything. Pray yourself out of that. And there ain't enough lust out there either to satisfy you. Let me tell you something. There ain't nothing worth going to hell over. Oh, the rich man thought he had it. But when he, you know, the Bible said he wouldn't even give a lot of his crumbs. 
But the angels come and got him and took him to heaven, to paradise. The rich man didn't die after that. And the Bible told about him too. That in hell he lifted his eyes and saw Rathus up yonder in Abraham's bosom or in heaven. So he was comforted. But he was begging Father Abraham to send Lazarus back to just touch his finger in water and cool his tongue. You know what God told him? There's a guff. Oh, one of day, me and you are either going to pass that guff one way or the other. We're either going to cross it going up or cross it going down. The rich man crossed it going down, that guff. I went to Grand Canyon more than once and carried this still up there, too. I wonder if it's one of the world wonders. It's scary. You just look and you don't see the depths of it. And it's, I don't know, maybe a quarter of a mile wide, maybe 500 feet, I don't know how. And every time I think about it, I think about hell. I've been there a few times. Hell is down there somewhere. Hell is down there somewhere. Y'all know when they was drilling that oil over yonder, one of them countries. Years ago, I was over there, and I know it's true. There ain't no story. One of these companies over there drilling oil in one of them, Nigeria, I believe, Algeria. Algeria. And it drilled and drilled, and after a while, the drill burned up and it pulled it up. And the fire had burnt, drilled into hell. They dropped, and this is true, I know I went over there for myself. They dropped a microphone down there in that hole. They heard people screaming in hell. I believe for about three minutes and then the microphone melted and I heard that myself thank you Jesus there is a hell that's all over in Algeria didn't any y'all y'all might not heard about when I'm 39 holding I'm glad I wasn't born when y'all did cause I know things y'all won't never get to know hallelujah I said hallelujah how many has ever heard about that there's a few of you. Some of you didn't know. It, it was the truth. I went over there myself. I talked to those guys. I with stuff like that. I used to have my own jet, and they used to fly me anywhere I wanted to go. And something like that's necessary for preachers to know about. You know, people don't preach about hell no more. But there's still a, the old Baptist preachers I got saved on said there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And they used to get up there and give out all the call and scare the devil out of me every time I went to church. But I just couldn't give up my country music. But one day, I tell you, I got the country music scared out of me and the devil. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. And the Lord let me spin. And I was in one of them suits that, that you have to sing on the Grand Opera. And I went to hell for a few seconds. Seemed like a lifetime. They said I was a half a minute, minute. My suit went into sweat. And a voice spoke to me as I was in hell. said, go to church and get saved. What you're doing now is going to send you to hell. I left right then, went found me a Baptist church and got saved. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I gave Grand Walker a permanent wave. <laughs> You better be giving your sins a permanent wave. Hallelujah. It's real. And there must be somebody here lost tonight. Must be somebody uh, straddle of the fence. Must be somebody you love the Lord but you can't give up. Hanging on to something. You know God can help you there. I'm going to tell you folks. You hear people, well, if Jesus loves me, he's not going to say, he don't send nobody here, we send ourselves. <laughs> there's no lust, there's no nothing out there, no drugs, no nothing that's worth. And think about it, 
death is sure. Life is uncertain, they always preached to me growing up. I'd be shocked to hear people that just healthy as I am. And God has kept me healthy. I ain't been to the checkup in the last two years because I've been so busy, but I am going to get one for the years out of the first of the year. I just ain't been home enough to... Uh, I got three different clinics I go to, and I just ain't been home enough to do it, but they, they, they st ain't marked me off the list yet. I'm coming. I say, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> I just don't like to go through that tongue. <laughs> I don't like people looking through me, but that's about to... <laughs> Anybody ever been through one of them things? When they look to you, they, time, but they see everything that's wrong with you. But so far I've been healthy and I've stayed healthy, but it's just that just knowing that there ain't nothing wrong with you makes you feel good. As it makes you feel good. <clears throat> it's just tells a healthy person, but I kept feeling in my prayers that she needed to go get a checkup. And she never had, but she did. And she uh, had a little thing in her organs that if she hadn't had it moved then, it would turn into a tumor, a cancer, and they got it. And, and But the Lord showed me, and she never had no symptoms. Thank the Lord. You know, when I was praying out at our gate, and the Lord said, she, you need to get this checked. Thank the Lord. Don't you know, sometimes it's, it ain't wrong to get the doctors checked you up. I don't like going through that tunnel. <laughs> Cause I hope nobody stops that switch, <laughs> and I hope the I hope the thunder don't like the electricity out, <laughs> or the lightning, <laughs> or somebody forget to pull the switch, <laughs> or pulls it. <laughs> Hallelujah! But to know you're healthy makes you feel good. Amen. You know, and I well, I've never preached against medical doctors kept me alive six hundred years. You know, when I was crippled and dying with bone cancer. And I always honored them. I went back to the, that hospital and visited them after I was healed and in the ministry. And some of the, some of the people are still there. Old, old Dr. Martin that, that, that probably saved my life of being the first one. I went back before he died and prayed with him. Praise you know, and he went on to be with the Lord. He gave his heart to the Lord. Praise Thank God. you, Jesus. But, uh, but it's a miracle they found me in time to save my life. Thank the Lord. I never preach against medical science and medical world. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. God is a good God. I said He's a good God. And He sees you. And sin ain't worth it. So I feel, uh, uh, you know, when I was praying today, the Lord said there's seven people going to be in that service tonight if they don't get their soul right. Something out there is going to get you, grab you, before you have time to get it right. Mercy. Mercy. And the Lord told me, and He did. He sent me to the other side of the world for one soul, and He did. He sent me all the way to Cape Town, Hallelujah. South Africa. That's what opened them doors over there. Hallelujah. I was in Detroit, and a little girl fell. Nine floors and broke all her bones, nine years old, and, but she didn't die. And I seemed to God preacher knew me and read my uh, about me. And he called me in Detroit and asked me, would I come? And a man in that was with me. He said, I'll pay you away. I went straight to Cape Town. What opened up Africa for me? I went in there and she was, every bone in her body, was broke and they didn't know why she's alive. Went in there and prayed for her in Cape Town at the hospital and God divinely, instantly put all her bones back together and brought her back to life. That opened up Africa for me that I've reached. I've reached over 40 of their countries. Thank God. He's God. Yeah. You know, this, this ain't, you know, people building, building, building. We're going to leave everything behind us. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. I, all it is, I, I request Jesus come in my lifetime. I don't want you to put me in them holes. I want to be alive when Jesus come. 
And I'm, I'm praying for I don't know about you. Is any of y'all praying for the come by him? I'm praying, hasten your coming, Lord. Hasten your coming. Hasten your coming. Times is getting worse every day. Christianity since Obama's been in fell from 92% down less than 20%. And they, I didn't get this year's polls that O'Reilly does. It may be lower than that. That was last year. That's how far we are going in America. Some or another, America fixed to go to hell. God going to turn this country into hell. We can't, I don't believe we're going to make it many more years. No. And I don't know about you. I hope you women got enough sense not to vote for Hillary. Yeah. I pray if you vote for Hillary, you'll regret that the rest of your life. We don't need that, Hussie. I don't care if you don't like it. We don't need that, Hussie. My mom would put a B to it. <laughs> she was alive, but I won't put the B to it. Mama would. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. I said, <laughs> you said, you're crazy. No, I ain't. We don't need her up there. She's an infidel. And I told y'all when Clinton was a, the governor of Arkansas, what dirty devil he was. He was a womanizer, yes, and people wouldn't believe me. I prayed for seven women up in Arkansas he raped. And I know they didn't lie. I've seen the scars he left on them. But yet they still put him in the White House twice. We're gone in America. We don't care if the devil runs for president. Some of you vote for him or some of your friends would. But you know what? It ain't going to have God is fixing to move again in America. America, Europe is gone. Europe ain't but 2% left. Canada's 2% Christian. We the last country on earth, except for those countries in Latin America, that's Catholicism. They believe in God, but Catholicism ain't going to bring revival. We're going to have to have the Holy Ghost to bring revival. The Pope ain't going to bring revival. He's going to hell with the rest of the popes. You know, how do you know? Because he claimed to be a sin remitter. God don't put that power in our hands. We can remit sins through the blood, but we cannot remit people's sins on our own. God don't give us that privilege to forgive sin. We can, through the name of Jesus, I remit your sins, go and sin no more, but unless you go and sin no more, your sins ain't gone. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, there's some people on the balances here. I know there's some people on the balances. You can't have it both ways. The Bible said you can serve God in what? Mamma. Bible said, choose you this day. Usually God don't let me preach, especially uh, one or two days. But something is wrong here. Something, somebody is on the edge. You watch it. There'll be seven people in this area. You're going to kick the bucket if they don't get right with God quick. They was either your last night or today or tonight. Let me tell you, you better wake up. God is warning. I said, God is warning. You say, how do you know? I was just up here, just across. Just inside of South Carolina a few weeks ago. It ain't rained in months. And the word of God came. The Lord told me to leave two days early. Told me they're going to be a. Was you there? I told them, I said, gonna be, they, and they, they said it wasn't all right. And I said, there's going to be a storm come through here like crazy. You, you was there? Yes, sir. I, I said, it's coming through here, and water is going to run in the highways like rivers. Like days of Noah. People are going to die of the scores. We didn't get a hundred 
miles into Georgia. We didn't get an hour or more in Georgia. We cut the radio on. All of that storm in two hours that was on our hit we swept through there. Bringing destruction. People found dead for days for them waters and them floods. Don't you tell me I don't know what I'm saying doing tonight. Y'all been in some of me. Y'all travel some of these meetings. Let me tell you something. Somebody is on verge of hell tonight. No sin. It's, it's, you can't. You, sin's in our spirits. If you die with sin in your spirit, that sin can't go to heaven. You can't go to heaven, that soul can't. You want to get a new body. You'll get a new body that won't it'll burn forever and ever and still won't burn. This body will burn, but the body you have in hell won't burn. The rich man's still burning, and the body you have in heaven ain't going to be sick. It's going to be, uh, we're going to know one another, but it's going to be a glorified body. Thank God, and it's going to be forever and ever. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't go to hell. Don't pray with your soul. Sin is sin. I said, see the sin. No sin here tonight. Kind of you fall going out that door. Drop dead if you don't get your soul right. You're burning hell and you'll be there before 10 seconds or 20 seconds. The rich man died and immediately lifted his eyes and held his soul in. Said, I'm tormenting these flames. The poor man died too. Lathers, but the angel took him to heaven. God. Thank God. Hallelujah. You don't have to go to hell. Hallelujah. Don't play with your soul. Don't be half Christian, half world. You can't. Mom, you told us, said you can't be pig and pup at the same time. You either are going to have to join one side or the other. Joining the church, going to church on Sunday ain't going to get you to heaven. The Bible said, except you're born again, you cannot enter. The Bible said, when you're born again, you become a new creature. The old man, the old woman, ever who you were, passes away. And God gives you a new man. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You can't have it both ways. You know what's wrong with this modern day church? Nobody wants to give up nothing. Bible said, come out of the world and be separated, says the Lord, and touch not, taste not, handle not, that which is wrong, that which is unclean. We don't want to give it up. We want to have, mom used to tell us, growing up, said, what's wrong with y'all kids? You want to have your take, cake and eat it too. You can't have it both ways. You can't be a high-hearted Christian. You either totally sold out or you can't straddle the fence. You either going to sell out to God, come out of the world. And I'll tell you something. Probably some of you getting a warning. God will never warn you no more. Mercy. Some of you are dying in your sleep and you won't Mercy. wake up till you be in hell. Mercy. Hey, people dying every day. The doctors can't find a thing wrong with them. Amen. You ain't got to be sick to die. I'm for well. I don't care what you are. You, you ain't got to be sick. God said, if I take your breath away, you'll die. Amen. And that's what God's going to do. There's at least seven to eight people in this place. You're on the balances. You cannot play church, folks. And you cannot once know the truth and then walk away from it and start doing your little doings. Too many people like that now in church, especially in what we call when I was growing up holiness. Now we don't hear that much. No. 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 But it's still holiness without which no man shall see the Lord in peace. Still holiness without. No man shall see the Lord and I added to peace. Because them old preachers said, you'll never see God in peace that I raised up under unless you submit yourself and become holy unto God. This is what I do. Give your soul to God. Give your body to God. 
Reach your hearts, not your garments. Humble yourself. It ain't, ain't nothing out there. Man, here I am. Standing here. I've got 19 Martin guitars. And I wouldn't sell them for nothing. People give them to me. The opera gives them to me. People from, from the place above where they make them, they send them to me sometimes. <laughs> Called calling me, bull people bought them and anybody else. And I'm here ready to step on the stage of the Grand Ole Opry to join that. A voice spoke to me. All right, I've turned 19, but I was in that age. Said, go to church right now and get saved. If you do what you're fixing to do, you're going to burn in hell. And for 30 seconds a moment, I went to hell. And that opera suit turned to solid sweat. When I come out of hell, I walked out of there. They tried to get me not to. I went straight. I didn't know who or where. I saw a Baptist church. But this time it was 8, 30 or 9 o'clock. And that Baptist church was standing about right back there. That, giving an altar call. He, I guess there was in a revival or something. I don't know. And I stopped and I stood in that door. And I heard him say, oh, that awful, awful hell. You don't want to go there. If you don't want to go to that awful, awful hell, come and give me your hand. I went right down there then and gave him my hand. And he put me right over here on this side. And God saved my soul that night. I've never looked back. Oh, I've been on the Grand Opera stage two or three times since, but they got me to come in to sing gospel, and they didn't make me stay with them. They let me come in and do it and leave. But not for sure. God don't want us to think we're better than people. He wants us on the streets to be, to be Christians, but don't act like we're better than sinners. God wants us to realize there's people out there that we need to be kind to and show them love and compassion no matter what kind of character they got they need us and people out there in the world they don't want to go through these Christians that think they save God they want somebody that's got a broken spirit you know a broken spirit I said a broken spirit you hear me my wife has got one of the sweetest testimonies. She was at the crossroads of her life. And God come to her in the spirit. She was a good girl, but she was, it was either make a decision, go this way or that way. And she started crying. And some she went, just looked in a phone book and found a preacher, didn't know who he was. A Baptist preacher went and he prayed with her. Prayed with her all day long, nearly to the evening. Said, I know I gotta go, but she gave her heart to God. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Just shortly after that I met her. She told me that story. I thought, Jesus, if I can get this woman in my life, she'll go to heaven with me. We'll fly together. One time I had a vision, Jesus come, we were flying to heaven. Man, alive, we went through uh, such beautiful, then one up there's a big black cloud. We went through that so dark. On the other side was the world. We come through that cloud. There was another world out there in such city. Boy, we were flying when I come out. I thought, oh God, I missed it again. <laughs> Three times I had experience. I went to heaven like that. Once I did make it there. And I got there, there was a man working on mansions, and, and the streets was gold. And, and he was outside putting the final works on the windows of these beautiful mansions. I looked at him and he looked at me and it was Jesus and he was there on a little high stool and he looked at me. He said, I'm Jesus. He said, I want you to go back to the earth and you preach to, to my people all over the world and tell them that I've gone to prepare a place 
and in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not truth, true, I would have told you. He said, go tell them what you saw. God's got a mansion for you. God's got a, a mansion for you. Jesus is, and I believe he's still preparing a mansion. 2,000 years he's building mansions. Heaven ain't going to be to some blah, blah. It's, a, it's another world. It's a new heavens. It's a new earth. And God is separating the sheep from the goats. When we step at that door, the goats will go into one part of the world, which is hell, and we'll go into heaven. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Oh, don't go to hell. Don't go to hell. I've done seen, I've done looked in people's caskets that told me I'm going out now one more time, one more uh, Saturday night, but they didn't make it. I've stood at the bedside of and caskets of people. I've stood at the bedside of people screaming. Oh, that awful hell holding their hands, trying. I spent my life since I was 19 years old. Started in a, a worldwide ministry when I was early in my 20s. The time I was 26 years old, had the biggest tent that's ever been built three times in the world. They want me all over the world. You know why? They don't want me over there to start religions. They want me to come and talk about what I'm talking about. Amen. How these preachers go over and try to put on all this psychology and theology. We don't need that. We need the Lord Jesus Christ. All this other stuff won't save us. All this big time and these parties and these churches are having parties. Now they got picture shows in the churches. Now they got ball games. Now they got games. You know it's a true. All these churches are playing religion. They're not taking folks to hell. You can't have it. You either got to come out of the world or go to hell. You can't have the world and, and heaven too. It's either come out or go to hell. It's a self-denial. Mom used to tell us kids, Mom was a devout Christian from the time she was 13. She told us boys, there's six of us, seven of us. When my dad had a son before he married my mom, he's married before, which was seven sons actually, because he was daddy of all of us. My mom told me, she said, son, hell ain't worth all those boys. Hell ain't worth burning forever and ever. Mamas ain't telling their kids about hell no more. Back when I was what little bit of school I got, the school teachers read the Bible to you and prayed in school. Now Obama and the rest of these proclaiming, I think, started the whole devil mess, getting Bibles out of school. But both of them are going to be burning in hell one day. Wish they left the Bibles in school. You know it's the truth. Some of you, you went to school the other day. They read the Bible to you and they prayed with you. Now it's against our law. You can't do it. They will turn you out of church. They will will turn you out of, out of school. They will discharge you from school. You can't take a Bible into school no more. Let's get saved, people. Somebody in this building is fixing to go to hell. And I guarantee you, I won't get home if you don't. I got to be in Brownwood, Texas, Saturday of next week. Wake up. Wake up. Let go. Sin ain't worth it. Lust ain't worth it. Sleeping with a man ain't your husband or with a woman ain't your wife. Smoking cigarettes. Drinking beer. Cussing. Ain't worth it. You say, what are you talking about? Bob said, if you defile this body with these things, I'll destroy you. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You don't belong to yourself. God said, you are not your own. You were bought with a Christ. And if you were, you were bought by Jesus, and if you go to hell, you're an intruder. 
It ain't worth it. And I've had hundreds over the years. I met them missionary trips. I met them Latin America. I met them in Africa. Men that was in these services come up to me and see me and recognize me. Bombay and other places said, thank you, Brother Terrell. You don't know it. I was in one of your services and got saved. Because where you preach, hell ain't worth it. I believe it'd be good if all of us come down to this altar. Amen. Then, no, then some of us wouldn't feel ashamed either. Come down and get on your knees and let's pray. Amen. Come down and get on your knees and let's pray. God will wash your sins away. God will wash your sins away. Yes. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. But if you've ever prayed, if you've ever prayed, pray. If you've ever prayed, prayed. If you've ever prayed, prayed. Lay your lives down. Lay your lives down. I said, Lay your lives down. Lay your lives down, folks. Lay your lives down. It ain't worth it. Oh, Jesus, God, we fall upon our knees upon the altar tonight, Lord. God, we give you everything tonight. God, God we lay down lying, God. We lay down cheating, Lord. God, let us get all this, God, under the blood tonight, Jesus. Lord, we don't want to go to hell. God, we don't want you, Lord. God, to give up on us, Jesus. God, we need your mercy tonight. God, we need your forgiveness tonight, Lord. God, we need, Lord. God, your blood tonight, Lord. God, we know that God, the devil's running to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. God, because he knows, God, that he has a short time. But Lord, we need your mercy, God. I know this hour, God, that you're calling your people up. But Lord, you're giving us a line, God, that we can't go on, Lord, the way we've been going. God, we can't continue, Lord. God, in these sins, we can't continue, Lord. God, in these little pet sin, Lord. God, God, everything, God. God, you said that not one sin was going to enter in. And Lord, God, we ask you tonight, Jesus, to wash us up. God, look at forgive us, Lord. Forgive us our iniquity, Lord. Who forgives all our iniquities, Jesus. God, all these things, Lord, and heals our sicknesses, Jesus. God, I give up, Lord. God, I've tried the world. We tried these things. God, we've continued, Lord. God, in these things, but Lord, Lord, God, we look to you tonight, Jesus. Lord, and you said if we call upon your name, God, you said even the last day, God, even before your coming, and they that call upon the name of the Lord, God, they would be delivered. God, they that call upon your name, Lord, you said I'll save them. God, I'll deliver them, Lord, from hell. God, we will deliver tonight. God, purify us with your blood. Wash us, Jesus. Make us clean. Make us pure. God, I want to be purified and sanctified. God, I want to be fitting, Lord, for your use, Jesus. God, some of us preachers, Lord, we ain't no use to you no more. God, the ways that we've walked and the things that we've done, God, we no use to you no more. But, Lord, I want to be found fitting tonight. God, forgive me, Lord. Wash me, Jesus. Sanctify me, Lord, from the soles of my feet. God, to the crown of my head. Baptize us tonight in the Holy Ghost. God, take away, Lord. God, give us strength, Lord. God, to pray that we not enter into temptations. That we don't enter into these things, Lord. This carried us to hell. God, you told us tonight. God, that you want us to stand up and fight. God, put that fight back in me tonight. God, to fight against lust. God, to fight against homosexuality. God, to fight against, Lord, all these different things, Lord. God, you're trying to overtake us tonight. Lord, I want to be washed. I want to be cleansed. God, I want to fulfill God, your righteousness in my life. I want to fulfill in me tonight, Lord. God, your will, Jesus. God, we've been held captive. God, at the devil's will. But Lord, God, we call upon you for help. We call upon you, Lord. God, for your kind of be shown. God, show us that love one more time, Lord. Let the blood that drip from your body. God, from the cross, Lord. God, let let us be washed tonight. God, take away the hardness of our hearts. God, we've kicked against the pricks. God, we've 
we've went in our own way, that we've done our own thing, but Lord, we've been bought, that we've been purchased, Lord, that you have paid a great price, God, to deliver us, Lord, from all these things, that so many heartaches, Lord, that we've walked through so many, God, relationships, God, so many different things, God, this took us into the depths of sin, Lord, the devil has took us into places, and God caused us to get cold and indifferent in our hearts, God, some of us, God, our hearts are just callous over, God, don't seem like it can be penetrated, like our hearts cannot be touched, but Lord, we ask you tonight, God, to press through that crust, God, press through tonight, God, press through tonight, press through us tonight and touch us, God, touch us with salvation, touch us with a healing, God, let that tenderness, Lord, God, begin to destroy, God, these old hardened hearts tonight, God, in our minds, Lord, God, let our minds be pure, help us tonight to get back and bring every thought under subjection, God, in the obedience of Christ, Lord, you've told us, God, how to overcome and be overcomers, Lord, through you, Jesus, Lord, you told us that we can do all things through Christ that strengthen us, God, we can't kick these habits, Lord, we can't kick these addictions, Lord, through stand close to your word, stand upon our knees, God, calling upon your name daily, God, calling upon you, Lord, God, for us to be strengthened, oh, God, God, I lay myself upon this altar, God, I lay myself before you tonight, God, at the foot of the cross, oh, have mercy on me, have mercy on me, oh, Lord, I call upon your name, Jesus, I call upon you, Jesus, I call upon you, Jesus. Wash me, Lord. Wash me, Lord. God, don't leave anything uncovered in my life. Don't leave anything uncovered, Jesus. Don't leave anything uncovered. Lord, give me strength, Jesus, that I don't go back willfully, Lord. God, into these sins. That I don't go back willfully. God, into these things that's had a hold of me. God, some of us, Lord, has had these things for years, Jesus. But, Lord, we need your help tonight. Lord, we don't want to go to hell. God, I know that hell is real. God, I know this word tonight. God, we can begin to feel hell. We begin to feel the fires. We begin to feel the hate. God, that the devil has toward us. God, the way he wants to take us. But God, your love is reaching out to us tonight. God, your love is reaching out to us tonight. God, some people, the devil has got them taken that the Lord don't love them anymore. Look where you're at in your life. But God, your love is reaching out tonight. Lord, we've got to make a choice. God, are we going to answer, Lord? God, are we going to answer, Lord? God, don't let nobody here tonight make the choice, God. And God, end up in hell. But wash, God, wash tonight. God, it's hard to kick against these pricks. God, you're anointing, Lord, and your love is reaching out to us. God, we fall at the foot of the cross tonight. God, we fall at your feet tonight, Jesus. God, is that woman, Lord. God admitted so many sins, washed your feet with her hair. God, because her sins were many, Lord. God, as we fall in humility, God, as we fall, Lord, humbly before you, God, you said that my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Lord, you said you would forgive us our sins, Lord. God, you've given us a promise, Lord. God, we don't have to go through a, a six-month initiation, but God, we can leave here pure and sanctified. God, is your children tonight. God, we don't have to leave here serving the devil. We don't have to leave here, Lord. I don't care what lies the devil tells. Lord, he's going to tell his lies. But God, you've given us truth tonight. Lord, you've given us truth tonight. God, you've given us heaven or hell. God, and I'm choosing heaven tonight. I'm choosing Jesus tonight. I'm choosing you tonight, Lord. God, I give up my ways. God, I give up my mind. God, I give up my attitude. God, I give up, Lord. God, the cold. I give up bitterness.
this. I give up strive. But Lord, I choose you tonight. I choose your kindness. I choose your brokenness. Lord, I choose, Lord. God, that that you have purpose for me tonight. Oh, no, Lord, that the devil, God speaks to people's minds, say, Lord, that that word was not for me tonight. But, God, you've given all of us that word tonight. God, we've all got pet sin. God, we've all got things, Lord. God, is separating us from you. God, you said sin separates the face of God from the people. Lord, we've all got some things in us, God. And I lay it down, Lord. Save me from my troubles. God, save me, Lord. God, I want to be saved tonight. God, I want to leave here saved tonight. God, I thank you, Jesus. God, that you've given us a name. God, above every name. That we are by that we are saved. God, we can't call upon another. We can't join some kind of religion. But God, we've got to join up with you. God, we got to join up, Lord, with the price that was paid. Lord, only through you. God, you are the door, Jesus. Lord, you said that there's no way. God, to the Father except through Jesus I am the way the truth and the life there is no way the Father except through your Son Jesus Christ and Lord you said that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord that shall be saved not the devil's whispering lies God in the people's minds even as they're on their knees praying but God be by those things and Lord let your liberty not come in the hearts of your people let the knowledge of salvation enter in the hearts of your people tonight Jesus oh 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 lay it down Lord Lord of the altar. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, God, your ears are lifted to the cries of your people. God, deliverance comes to those of a broken and a contrite spirit. Lord, you told Moses, I've come down because I've heard the cries of my people. And by the taskmasters, Lord, by the reason of the taskmasters, God, the devil, God has been in many people's lives of taskmaster, Jesus. But Lord, you've delivered us, Lord, from the powers of hell. God, if we'll accept you, Lord, if we'll accept you, Lord. God, if we'll fight against the devil, we'll fight, Lord. God, you told us tonight we got to get a fight in us. God, the devil's going to run rampant, God. He's gonna, God, you said he's even going to deceive many, even the elect, God, if any way possible. God, we've got to call on you tonight, Jesus. Oh. 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 You said is the anointing, God. God, that destroys the yokes, Lord. God, this word, God, is anointed, and you're destroying yokes tonight. You're breaking and destroying chains about people's necks tonight. God, through this prayer, Lord, God, we can change, Lord, that this purpose. God, through this salvation, even as Hezekiah turned his face to the wall, God, we turn our face to the wall tonight. 
God, we get our eyes off of all of these distractions. Lord, I know the devil whispering in ears and saying, you'll never be able to lay down nicotine. You'll never be able to quit alcohol. It's going to be the same when you leave here tonight. But God, you said greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God, you'll fight for your people. God, you'll fight deliverance in your people. God, you're a deliverer. God, that devil's not a deliverer. But God, he delivers us into hell. But God, you delivered us from hell. God, you taking us out of hell tonight. God, you saving us from hell. God, we've got to stop believing these lies and God believe your truth. God, you, you said, Lord, that he that believe a lie be down by the lies. But God, your truth tonight reigns in our heart. God, your truth is ringing in our ears tonight. God, you made hell real to us. God, but you made heaven real to us. God, it's for me and my house. Tell the devil tonight, that's for me and my house. That's for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to serve the Lord. Tell that devil tonight, devil, I'm going to serve the Lord. You've had me too long. You've had control too long. But I take that back. I give my life to Jesus Christ. Let that devil know. Let that addiction know that you have given your life to Jesus. Let that devil know. Let that spirit of hatred know. Let bitterness know. All those things. Let them know. Let that sin lie. Let that man die and become that new creature tonight in Christ Jesus. You said, but all things, all things that pass away. Behold, I make all things new. Jesus making you a new tonight. He clearing your heart, making you a new creature in him tonight. Let him clothe you with his righteousness. Let him clothe you tonight. Let him clothe you. Let him clothe you. Let him clothe us with his righteousness. Oh, we thank you. Oh, we thank you for your cleansing. We thank you for washing. Oh, we thank you for your pure, pure time. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, The life of death that you had. God said, I give you beauty for ashes. Your life had been nothing but ashes. But God said, you give me your life of ashes and I'll give you the beauty of salvation. I'll give you the beauty. Some of the devils done got some of you thinking that you can't get that from here. Hallelujah. But through Jesus, through Jesus, through Jesus, some of you thinking I can't quit these things. I want to quit, but I can't quit. Hell, if you could quit it on your own, Jesus would have never had Calvary. There'd have never been a cross. If you could have done it by yourself, Jesus would have never came. But He came for you. They can't do it in your own power. Hell, that the exorcist is not a man, but it's by the power of God. God's delivering you. It's God that saves you. You're not saving yourself tonight, but God's saving you. Jesus saving you. Jesus delivering you from drugs. Jesus delivering you from alcohol. Jesus delivering you from the pits. Oh, 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 hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let him have it, let him have it. Let him have it, let him have it. You don't just give God, but God's replacing. God's replacing that hate with love. He's replacing. He puts something in the place of what he takes out of you. He didn't just 
just come to take your sin, but he said, I've come to give you life. Oh, God, give you life in the place of that death. God, give you something in the place of that that, that he's taken away from you in the place of that sin, of the place we used to spend all the time on Friday and Saturday night in the club, and he put church in that place. He put love in that place. He put the Holy Ghost in that place. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. I said, God. God. And overtake our lives. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Angels are shouting in heaven tonight. Oh, the word said, angels begin to shout in heaven. Oh, hallelujah. Angels shout over heaven over backsliders returning unto God. Sinners coming unto the Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. The Lord put a fire in me. God put a fire in me. God, I don't want to fall. I don't want to fail. I don't want to come up short. But I'm going to tell you what, if you do, you've got an advocate with the Father. How I said, you've got an advocate with the Father. Stay close to Jesus. Don't leave here tonight thinking that your life will just take care of itself. You've got to take care of your life. Life don't take care of itself. You've got to take care of your life. You allow the devil... He'll take Jesus out of you. It's up to you to keep Jesus. It's up to you to stay saved. It's up to you to stand up and fight. It's up to you to fight against the principalities and powers. We pull down strongholds through Jesus Christ. We destroy these things by Jesus. We stay saved by Jesus. You can't even keep yourself saved. That's why many people keep going back to the world and keep falling and keep coming up short until finally they just give up because they try to stay saved by their own power. But it ain't by your power, it's by your faith in Jesus. And you're going to keep your salvation by faith in Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is the only one that can deliver you. The greatest miracle of all time ain't blind eyes open and the dead getting up. But the greatest miracle that Jesus ever worked was a heart transplant, was a heart change. Oh, your mama couldn't change my heart. Daddy couldn't change my heart. Friends couldn't change my heart. Preachers couldn't change my heart. People couldn't change my heart. But Jesus got down in there. And where there was hatred, where there was bitterness, and put a change in there. Oh, hallelujah. It's a work only Jesus can do. You can't change your your heart, but if you allow Jesus, he'll change your heart, he'll change you, you don't have that nature that daddy had, you don't have to go on with that nature that your family had, tradition of your family, but you're not born of that natural family anymore, but you're born again, Jesus Christ, born again of Jesus, you take upon his nature, you take upon him, you take upon his love and his nature towards your brother, towards your sister, toward people on job, no matter what goes on around you. Let Jesus be your deliverer daily in your life. I ain't telling you how to get saved. I'm telling you how to stay saved. God wanted people to stay saved. I mean, don't go back to the world. You done been out there too long. It ain't, it ain't got nothing for you. Go on into something you ain't never walked in. Go on and let's go on into something we've never walked in. Eyes haven't seen. Ears haven't heard. Lord it entered into the heart of those what God will do for them that love him. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Go on and have revival. The best way to stay saved is to be active. Is to be active. You stop being active, you die. You got to be active. I don't care how many doors you get slammed in your face. I don't care how many kids at school don't want to hear your testimony. I don't care. People on the job don't want to hear, don't hear from people don't want to hang around you. Honey, don't let them be an influence to you, but you be an influence to them. The church used to be an influence on the world, but the world has become. But because the church, the only way that the, the, the world became an influence on the church is the world got churchly and the church got worldly. 
Hallelujah, but there's a division. God says, uh uh. Hallelujah, I separated light from darkness and, and I've never allowed it to come together. Light and darkness doesn't mix. There's got to be a division. Here's where we draw the line. Heaven and hell. Light and darkness. There's a time. It's time. You can't you can't straddle this fence. It won't work. God, God's getting ready to puke some things out of his mouth. And I don't want to be a part, hallelujah, of that puke. I want to be hot or cold. But I'm getting on the hot side tonight. How many is getting on the hot side tonight? I mean, no, the Bible said that my God is a consuming fire. I mean, something's got to continue burning my bones. Something's got to be alive in me. God ain't raising up dead pew sinner, but God raising up an army. And I'm going to be a soldier in the army. Hallelujah. Of the Lord. Oh, oh. Thank you, Jesus. How many is going home with a victory tonight? Thank you, Lord. I'm gonna ask, I wanna ask Brother Ron to come and close this out tonight. We appreciate everybody being here. Don't go home wrestling with the devil and just let this be another night service. This wasn't just another service. There was plans on praying for the sick tonight. There was plans on praying for the sick tonight, but God had another plan. I said, God had another plan. Thank God that we've got one in our midst that knows how to be led by the Spirit at the right time. Because no doubt within the next few days, I've been around this thing ever since I was a child. I've seen them fall dead before they got past the ten stakes. And I've seen them pick them up dead and bring them back and say, man of God, raise them back up. And I've seen a man, he big tears begin to fall out and say, I can't do it. God's done spoken and ain't nothing I can do about it. Holy man can't change it. I feel that. I'm going to tell you something. God is bringing a fear back to church. God is bringing a fear back into his house. There ain't been no fear of God. There ain't been no fear fear about these children. These children ain't seen what some of us have seen. Going on. We haven't seen some of those things. But I'm going to tell you God's fixing to do some uh, some other things like he done with Annas and Sapphira. How do you fix to see some folks fall dead in the house of God and call fear? But I'm going to tell you something. I don't want that to happen. I, I, I want to fear God on my own. I want to choose uh, to fear God. I want to choose uh, to fear his word. I want to choose to fear this. How do you fight God? And I'm going to tell you, you can't make fear, but you can cry for it. God put this fear. It would be wise to have a cry in your heart. God, Lord, I'm not feeling like I should. God put a fear in my heart. God put a fear in my heart. God, I'm giving you that. God put that fear back in my heart. I mean, because I'm going to tell you something. Revival is a great thing. And God is bringing this revival on the scene. This is the hour of the greatest revival. But I remember the times growing up back in the 70s when there was a great revival in the land. And other, I may have been on the tail end of the, that move then in the 70s, but I'm going to tell you something. I mean, at the same time that, that, that there was revival and devils being cast out, I remember parents grabbing their children, covering up their eyes, devils coming out left and right, acting up in the soul, and them devils come out and begin to go and somebody else. All kind of things begin to happen. It's not only a great time of revival, but it's a fear time because there's a, there's a battle that's going on. I mean, and you see, there hadn't been no battle going on for a while, but the battle. It's time to set your battle in a way. It's time to stand up and begin to fight against these Philistines. It's time to get up and start fighting against these principalities and powers. We're not fighting a losing battle. But how many know we've been fighting a, we're fighting a promise of a winnable battle tonight through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We're going to ask Brother Ron to come and close this out tonight. But go home and fire. Wake up in the morning on fire. I mean, go to bed with Jesus on your mind and wake up with Jesus on your mind and fight the good fight of faith. And that's what Paul said. Fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, God, for the word that was preached. Jesus, God, I want to live so you can use me, Lord. God, touch this congregation, God, as they go home, Lord. And God, put it in our hearts to seek you, Lord, God, to draw closer to you, Lord, God. Oh, God, we charge this people, Lord, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, God, please, the head and not the tail, Lord, God. It's time for the Christian Lord God to come forth. God, it's time for you people to stand up and fight, Lord God.